nervous? Yeah, you seem stiff as a board. <laughs> uh, stiff as a dead deer. No, there's no dead deer this year. No, no dead deer for sure. We're gonna do a little recap of our 2022 deer season. I guess I'm sitting with Beecher. Yeah, that would be dad to you. Yeah. yeah. Mark Beecher you. So how was deer season? It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was uh, not as productive as we would have liked. It, but, was, uh, it was productive. We just didn't kill any deer. Yeah. yeah. No, it was a lot of fun. We'd, and, uh, We're going to have a tear in our beer. Yeah. The season started off warm. Getting heated up. Yeah. yeah. Getting all sweated up. It did. It was like, uh, and that's the way deer season usually goes. It's like two different... Uh, Two different seasons. Uh, the, the first yeah. half is usually, it starts out anyway, uh, first of November warm and, and uh, usually ends up cold, like in the middle of the winter. But we saw deer the entire, the entire was, season, yeah, well, right, from the, right from the get-go, we saw deer and stuff. And, uh, but, uh, and the deer movement changes from the beginning of the season yep. to the end. We're yep. talking about there's some spots that are really good early on. It's for some reason, late in the season. Yeah, we don't hunt there. There's like the yeah. last two weeks, especially if there's snow. Yeah, where we there's shot our deer in, deer. Uh, right, in 2021, we usually hunt that area and see deer and see sign there early in the season. But uh, for some reason, later in the season, there's no, uh, the deer have vacated the area. Yeah, it's basically a game of trying to see where yeah, you got to be flexible all year, all, yeah. all year long. Yeah, you got to, and uh, you kind of learn that as you uh, as you hunt an area for a period of time. You learn where you where you can go different times of the the uh, deer season to find deer. Unfortunately, it uh, up in that area, it generally turns out that you you most of the deer are somewhere around those migration trails later yeah. in the. It it never used to be like that. Nope. Nope. No deer were deer yarded there was, there everywhere. Was a lot of deer yeah. yards. There was there was yards everywhere around any body of water, any lake, any brook, yeah. any river. The deer would yard, but uh, the traditional yards they don't hold deer anymore. And they've what they've tracked deer going well forty, 40 miles, miles as a crow flies? Actually, yeah, probably further. Yeah, they had That's one. A I had read one that uh, hundred miles anyway. As a crow from flies? down east, yeah, yeah, from down east to Ashland, I believe it was about a hundred miles. So, so yeah, first week was warm, but we saw deer. Yeah. Then second week, kind of the same thing as the first week. We were still, we saw yeah. deer, but it was still really warm. Yeah. And then that brought us into Veterans Day weekend, which went up yeah. to Chandler Lake. Campus. That's exactly right. Yeah, Veterans Day was on a Friday. We we uh, we only hunted that one day up there. Just Saturday. Saturday. And we went into, so we went into some areas that we used to hunt. Yeah, years ago, that used to be good areas. That was actually the end of the warm weather because there was a hurricane. We had the tail end of a hurricane that came Sunday through. was warm and extremely, uh, Hurricane Nicole. We got the tail end of it uh, Friday night into Saturday. It poured that night. We were laying yeah. there in bed. Yeah. In we, had, we had a, a brief uh, period in the morning Saturday where it was dry and then it opened up again. Yeah, and incredibly warm. Very that warm. Morning. Yeah, yeah, tropical, tropical moisture. But we did, remember, warm. we were talking about, it kind of looked like one of those days you shoot deer you would see yeah it was like, it, it was, was dark and and uh, foggy, foggy and yeah and, yeah. So, and we saw four deer that day. and we saw four deer one i'm certain was a buck yeah which uh yeah, the first three was a doe and two fawns yeah so the one we saw driving back to camp i'm pretty certain it was a buck and actually i didn't post a video of it but you can see the deer running through the ditch oh no kidding yeah. remember we couldn't you was, you're like there's a deer yeah where i was I'd, sitting in, my, in the pickup yeah all the new vehicles nowadays have those big a pillars yeah right there yeah get airbags and anyway where i was sitting that's where the deer was running but i put the camera up in the windshield yeah and when i watched the footage of it i see the flag going down through the ditch yeah. i just couldn't i couldn't get it zoomed in with a high enough quality to see if it had right to see the head yeah on it but i was like yeah, all was, i saw was, was the, the flag going down in the in the raspberries and the bushes there along the ditch when we come around the corner. So it was nice to see some deer up there. So we spent the rest of the weekend there and then snow Sunday night. Yeah, and I was up Monday morning up oh, to the lake there. and we had, uh, yeah, we had some snow. Quite a bit in the, it was one of those snowfalls where you had quite a bit 
up on a ridge and you go down into a valley in the softwoods and you just had a crust down there. Oh, the, the ground was warm. Yeah. That, yeah. that all that rain we got, it was like yeah. 60 Well, it had been, yeah, and it only had been warm all fall anyway. We degrees. hadn't had any cold weather in the fall. So you're right, the, uh, the ground was warm. As I remember getting up there the first time up at the camp and which is obviously right up by the water. Yeah. There wasn't much snow there. No. Nope. You get up on a ridge where we were deer hunting. Yeah. And there's a fair amount more. Yeah. So then, I don't know, how'd you make out that, that week? You tracked some deer, didn't I you? I did, yeah. I, I saw some deer. I, I tracked two deer and, uh, and saw one fly. That was it. That and then I went up it. Tuesday night after work. Yeah. So I'm off on Wednesdays. We were getting another snowstorm on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, we had, we ended up, we had about a foot of snow basically through the rest of the season. I remember with those two storms there. So, yeah, so Wednesday morning I got up and I was like, they were calling, it was going to start snowing at 11. Yeah. And I was like, we got to get something going this morning yeah. because after that, hunting in yeah. snow was like yeah, try almost it. next to yeah. impossible. Yeah, trying you to find a... Trying to find a, a fresh buck track while it's snowing is, uh, they've literally almost got to be stepping out of it before you, So and, it, that's, and that's tough. Yeah, so we picked up, it was a small track, it wasn't anything big, yeah. and uh, went across a brook, across a road, and then we ended up yeah. jumping it up. Yeah, we did. Right when it started snowing. Yeah. And Ran down from where we came from. And down it went towards, right back to where we yeah, down came towards from. The brook. problem was it started to snow pretty good, and then... Basically everything just looks like pock marks in the snow. Yeah, and you, yeah you couldn't tell the old from the, the you new. You can't tell what was what. So. so we finished the day off there. Then we had deer camp week. Yeah. Which we should have shot deer that week. Yeah. We, we should started, have shot deer on Monday. Yeah, we started uh, Monday of Thanksgiving week. We saw six deer. Three, we believe, were bucks. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the deer, there, where we were hunting, there was a... Uh, it was some hot does in there or something because the deer were, were moving around there, going right across the road. Middle of the day. I think Mid middle of, yeah. Figured six bucks had crossed the road during the day. Yeah. Some while we were down in yeah. chasing yeah. the deer that blew at us when we first got yeah. out of the woods. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of activity in there. And I, and I, I said at the end of the day that uh, we should have had a deer in the back of the pickup. And Even. there was two right when I got... Before I got back to the truck. Yeah. Right? So I I knew I was coming close to the road. There's a stream down in there, and I was going to hook kind of up towards the road. And I come up onto the road, and I didn't cut any fresh deer tracks down in there. Yeah. And I got back to the truck, and you were like 30 minutes before I came out. Yeah. A buck and a doe. Well, there was two. You only saw one. I only saw one. I, d I don't know when. I assume the doe went by first. There was three. The, of course, I saw two of the deer that had made uh, tracks there. But there had been one earlier, and I don't know if that track, how long that track had been there. If he was with the, the, the first buck that I saw, and I just didn't see the doe go across. For, because I'm always looking, you know, beside was, and behind me uh, and, and it, moving my eyes. So, and where they were, way that was 300 yards down the road, they could get across that stretch of road in no time at all. Yeah. Because the two that I saw were pretty much completely across the road. I only saw him for just a couple seconds because if I'd had time, I'd have gotten out of the vehicle and hollered and stopped him. Yeah. And, and you know, maybe I could have stopped him and gotten out and gotten a shot. It's so, a, it's a doable shot for, for, I don't know about myself, but, uh, 300 yards in the open on a standing deer is not a, yeah. a lot it's of hard. hunters, a lot of hunters yeah. could do it. So, so I get back to the truck, <clears throat> and then a buck and nice deer had crossed, same yeah. spot. Yeah. And at that point, it was like 4 o'clock or whatever. I think it was I quarter think it of was, 4 yeah, like 4.15. It was 4.15 when I went in the woods. Was it? Yeah, because uh, I remember we can basically go to hunt it until 4.30. But the, we, we drove right down. After. And I ran up, yeah. Maybe you was, were with me when that deer came across the road. Yeah, I had just looked down. This is how fast it happened. I had just looked down, so covered in snow and crap like that and you had said there goes a big deer yeah. by the time i looked up it, it was gone it had gone it just, yeah. it just like it floated across the yeah road. that's what the, that's exactly what it was like they so they we just went fly, right across so we flew down the road they were going into a corner there was a skid trail in the corner of that road yeah because it forked right there and so i ran up in there 
and I basically went in as tracked as far as I could until I get into some dark growth and then I stood on the edge of the dark growth where I could see and tried calling but I yeah. mean, it was dark yeah yeah at 415 yeah. it's and it was a dark, dark day anyway it yeah. was it was cloudy and so it wasn't uh you're talking 15 minutes after the sun had set yeah so, so. It's, it's dark so then uh, Tuesday I think Tuesday was kind of uneventful chasing deer around I I watched that same trail and out of that corner came a doe and two fawns. Oh, you got footage. I videotaped them. Yeah, I, I have that. I videotaped uh, a doe and two fawns coming out of that same skid trail down at the corner, and they walked up towards the truck there and and then uh, went down to the low side on the left hand side. That would have been nine deer for the first two days yeah. that we saw. So then Friday yeah. we had company at camp, and I jumped up a buck that morning and he ran right towards where you, so you guys were up on a ridge. Yeah. You guys had gone on the opposite side of the road of yep. me. I picked up a backtrack going down into the spot where that big, I chased that big buck around. That's kind of where I wanted to go. And I didn't go very far and jumped him up. Yeah. And he ran, ran right out across the road, right up towards you guys. Yeah. And got on the migration trail and you guys didn't, no. I, did, I did a loop around you guys that day, and you had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, the guy, the, the gentleman I was with, George, he stopped, right, and he said, I hear something on yeah. that side. And, and we stopped and listened for quite a while. I don't hear well, so I, I didn't hear no, anything. You, you, and, you couldn't hear a no. dump truck going through it? No, no, I don't hear well, but George was <laughs> sure that he heard. And now looking back, he probably did. It he was probably, probably that deer. Because it, it was right where the deer went by us, yeah, well, off to our right, which was north. Wasn't a very big deer, so I didn't commit yeah. a lot of time to that. And then Saturday was the, well, it was a fun day, and it was kind of a bittersweet day. It was yeah, kind of an was, emotional yeah. roller coaster day. That was the, uh, that was your chance to get... Uh, you usually get one chance. Yeah. And, yeah, that was, so that buck, I, we had fresh snow that morning, perfect day to track and deer. Yeah. It was a it was gonna warm up above freezing, like what, thirty four, yeah. I think. Kind of yeah. sticky consistency, a little bit of a breeze. And that was his track going down in. Yeah. And kind of the same place always that he kinda You kinda find that with deer too. That east side of that ridge there and that yeah. old tote that dead end tote road. He uh that and he just a small section there of a couple hundred yards that he traveled back and forth. I can't tell you how, like, how many deer. Remember the one back in, well, 2009? It was after we had those two real hard winters. Yeah. And I was like, my chances of shooting a deer next to none because there was no deer. Right. It was, and I'm yeah. pretty sure I tracked the same buck three days in a row. Yeah. And he kind of had the same, the first day I tracked him, you could see where, you could see old sets of tracks. And you kind of get this, like, he's just kind of doing the same general same same loop game, there checking yep. pockets of does and that's what this buck was doing yeah and he kind of they're amazing animals because every time you get on a buck there's a lot of a lot of woods between deer oh yeah I mean. you can go a long ways <laughs> yeah. between and they're amazing how they can find especially a big buck track not only deer but i mean they, and then you you take the no the, you the, spend you can spend as much time trying to find a decent buck trap yeah. Yeah. before you even start hunting the deer. Yeah. And we were talking about, like back in the day when, well, before I was old enough to hunt, back in the 80s, you would drive, you guys would drive from camp. It was a different camp at the time. But you drive from camp, and a lot of guys you were hunting what, 30, 40 minutes away from the camp? Yeah, it was, well, it was, it was, but, and, it took and, about an hour to get where we were going. It was quite a ways from camp. And on we, the way back, there'd be dozens of nice oh, yeah. buck tracks that had crossed yeah. during yeah. the day. Yeah. So back then, and I always think of the story of Dean. Like if you were tracking a buck and something happened, you lost it or someone shot it. Or, right. You could stop and you could go find another one. Absolutely. And, get, yeah. and didn't Dean, he was tracking a nice buck. Yeah, that some um, Quebecer shot. Quebecers, they used to sit along the road. Yeah, he drove there. it right out to them. They shot it, and it was a nice ten pointer, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a nice deer. Of course, we didn't see it. Dean saw it. He 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 tracked it right up to where saw the guy dead. shot it. They shot it. We never saw the deer. He walked, went down the road, picked up another buck, and shot and shot that. it. Tracked yeah. it and yeah, shot that later in the afternoon. 
Yeah. So that, that, that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> no. And it's hard no. to track. Like if, I mean, I have no problem tracking like a mediocre buck or whatever. But it can be really hard because if they get into other deer, they all kind of look the same. Yeah. It's so much easier to track a big deer. Because yeah. it's pretty easy. You get into a bunch of deer tracks, and it's like, well, that's that's him right there. That's pretty yeah. easy to follow. But, yeah, so you spend as much time trying to find a buck track. Yeah. So that morning we were lucky. It was fresh. But yeah. an hour and a half into an hour and 45 minutes into it, I jumped him up. Yeah. And he didn't didn't run very hard. Yeah. And then brings me across to Brook. Yeah. Into some moose. And I had stayed because a couple of the times that you attracted him, they come back up in that that 200 yard, hook around and come back across that 200 that yard section of road that we're talking about that dead end tote road on the east side of the ridge they would come back up and cross that i thought maybe he would come back and that's the day that uh the young the young guy there he uh while i was watching the the road there he uh, the young guy came up and he was tracking the deer you were on yeah, he's, you would went like three you miles would, yeah, poor guy he would cut him off there i think he said he went about three miles so yeah. of course you were you were over an hour into it then. Yeah, we were. Yeah. And it wasn't too long after that you had shot at him. You sent yeah. me the message that you had just shot at him. And stuff. You know, and, I, <clears throat> and I'm the type that, and it's probably a double-edged sword for me, but, like, when I make a decision to do something, to commit to doing it, so, like, when I jumped him up the first time. Yeah, you committed, you're, you're committed for the day. Well, no, I mean, like, when, or excuse me, when I shot at him, I guess I had a choice. I could either hang out there and let him calm down or try to keep right up to him because we were coming into a bunch of cots. Yeah. And you saw the cots. There was all these long skid trails where yeah. you could see a long ways. And we were coming onto a bunch of roads. So I always get worried about other people. Cutting, being people. cut off yeah. yourself, yeah. And so I made a decision yeah. right then and there that, well, I'm just going to stay right on him and see if I can catch him yeah in these cots because yeah. there's all kinds of places that I'm, i just catch them waiting yeah. at the right so i went pretty hard and the problem is is like i might not be i might be mediocre at something but you're probably not going to outwork me right and i can't outwork a deer no no they're <laughs> they're they're in pretty pretty they, good shape they can so. cover some ground yeah and uh see i can be pretty stubborn and just kind of so i was going pretty hard yeah. Man, yeah, he, you would have. You broke. had to have been pushing him pretty hard. He <laughs> he bailed into the lake there. He broke right stuff. for the lake. I couldn't believe yeah. it. Yeah, he went like we got to the top of that ridge up from where you were sitting. Yeah, and then we went like two hours straight in a straight line. Where you know how they do those just that big trot. Yeah, he wasn't running, but he totally changed on how he was walking. And he yeah. just went right straight trot. Didn't stop. Yeah. I'm coming closer and closer to the lake, and I'm like, there's no way. Like, yeah, and then there we are in the lake. Yeah. And we still don't know what he did. No, I, 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 I can't I, imagine he swam across. That. No, that's a, that was a. And there was, was a headwind going right it, into. There was a headwind. It, the the lake was rough, and it was a long way to the other side. This is a big lake. This isn't a little pond. This is a big no. lake. I got to assume that maybe he just he went far enough down that you didn't see where he came out. Yeah, was, one way or the other, was, north or south. I was running out of time. It was. Yeah, well, you were. It was, was like it, two o'clock at that point. No. So I tracked him from. It was first thing that morning, six thirty, yeah, or so, yeah. And then, yeah, two o'clock was when he kind of bailed in the lake, yeah. and then then saw a spike horn and a couple of does there. And you know, some years I probably would have shot the spike horn if I'm not finding any deer. It's kind of hard to when you've spent all day yeah. on a nice buck, yeah, and you got a shot at it, and then to shoot a little little spike horn. So then we, so that was the end of that week. Didn't fill any tags. It was still fun. Oh yeah, it was. It's always a lot of fun we, to deer hunt. That uh, and we mentioned we get out. We saw. The deer population wise, I feel like it was better than yeah past than, years because yeah. we were we saw we saw quite we were a few seeing deer, more deer than usual see a lot of sign and uh, and we saw quite a few deer and and we had and we you know bucks we saw bucks and stuff didn't see a lot of big buck sign though didn't no, have no anything well, on there, there just that one yeah there isn't a lot of really big bucks there there are few yes. and far between that there's a lot of country in between them. So and they're, they're really, really big bucks. One that's yeah. going to go over two hundred. There's, there's just not a lot of them. So and that's why a lot of people don't really hunt up here. No, nope. <laughs> no nope. And I guess we could put it into context. We're three hours north of Bangor. 
yeah. three and a half hours north of Bangor. Yeah, we're pretty much, where we hunted is pretty much at the top of Maine, yeah. right at the... And we're, what, eight hours to get out of the state? Yeah. Yeah. And I look at a lot of people, they, people seem to really good in New Hampshire. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of deer shot, big deer, well, big rack deer. I don't yeah. know how, you yeah. know, they're probably shy at 200. Yeah. So yeah, then we went into muzzleloader week and... I only had two days to hunt that week. You hunted more. I hunted Tuesday, Paul, and then we hunted together Wednesday. And then we, we hunted well, the when, So Wednesday, and both days we got to hunt, or I got to hunt. Weather was terrible. Wednesday there was... It was cold was that storm. Well, it was weird. It's like, how do you dress for it? Because it was like nine degrees. Yeah. I think when was, I went out, and it was, it was supposed to be in the upper 30s by the end of the day. Yeah, it had warmed above uh, freezing so you start out, yeah. I was wearing uninsulated boots to start out with. Okay, we got a nice set, nice fresh set going across here, but she's gonna be tough today. So you freeze your butt off in the morning and then sweat your butt off in the yeah. afternoon. <laughs> yeah, there's one thing about Maine is they'll say, if you don't like the weather, wait a minute. Yeah. And yeah. literally it can change. In a minute. So quick. Yeah. So we didn't have much going on. Actually. Actually no, we did. Yeah, you yeah, had a chance to. Yeah. Wednesday. You, you shot it one. Wednesday, I went back to the, the trail that I had watched the beginning of uh, Thanksgiving week, Monday and Tuesday. And because it was cold, I think uh, that cold that morning, it had, uh, there was the, the deer that hadn't. There was some deer moving. Yeah. Yeah. They had, uh, and you had gone down the road and I was watching, I was on the road, but I was watching a deer trail and the doe came out and it wasn't long after we parted. No, I, I heard you shoot, I was just down around yeah. the corner. I was working out, yeah. there was a nice, well, decent buck track yeah. that had crossed and I was trying to figure out yeah. which part, he I think looks like he crossed yeah. twice. And I was trying to figure out. Yeah. So anyway, the doe came out and I, and, and she, she came out and I filmed her I stopped her in the road and filmed her. She stood for a long time, long enough so I tried to get her to move along. And uh, I think it was like five minutes later, I see another nose coming through the the bushes there in the ditch. And I thought, well, that's for sure, that's that's the buck following her. And it was, it was just a little guy. That was my spike horn. I, it may have been the same deer that you saw, coming from the same wasn't, area. It wasn't very far away. No, 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 so I, I, same thing, I was sitting in the, the driver's side of the, the pickup, and I opened the door, and I knew that, and he froze just in the same spot the doe did, perfect, broadside. I get out, uh, put the crosshairs on the middle of the chest, touched off the trigger, and expected to see the deer flop over. He didn't and even flinch. He didn't even flinch. <laughs> he, he didn't even move, and I'm going, well... Then you're pretty much, you know, the game's over. You're SOL. <laughs> yeah, because you don't have any, uh, there's no follow-up shots. You almost. Yeah, I loaded the gun. He sat there and <laughs> I He stood there the entire time. I, I loaded the gun. Powder. I was shooting 100 grains of powder, and the powder and was the original powder that I got with the gun. So I was a pretty good distance away from, my, looking back, I'd have gotten closer to the uh, the deer trail I wanted to hunt. I should have been a little closer. And you also, you basically put the crosshairs on center mass. Center mass, probably, right in the middle of the chest. Probably should have. Yeah, adjust, yeah, looking back, adjusted Paul. Accordingly. Hindsight's twenty twenty. When I was pulling up for the second shot, I thought you hold out his, right on his backbone on that shot. Yeah. But uh, like I say, it was like literally one second more and I could have shot again. And, uh, and uh, he didn't give me that one second. And uh, so next year I'll take the gun out with the same powder and the same the same bullet and I'll I'll do some well, shooting I, to see what uh, I might upgrade my muzzle loader. Yeah, I should. But I, I you know, looking back, if I really wanted the deer, if it you know, I'd either gone around the block of woods to where I know they cross on the other side or followed them in. You were right there. If one of us could have yeah. followed them and the other could have gone. <laughs> but to the you other said side. you were like sixty four, you know, yeah. It wasn't very big. Yeah. It didn't it wasn't it's a like whatever. It wasn't a heartbreaker. It wasn't a very big deer, so it it wasn't like I was upset or whatever. That I, I could live with it. So, so then, the last day of muzzleloader was crazy. It was warm. 
Porn rain. Porn rain. Well, it was yeah. actually didn't start till eleven. Yeah. We were having a hard time finding. Yeah, our our old and that and that happens a lot. Everything in. Because that changes. But driving in, we there was a fair number of deer that were crossing the road in one area. Yeah, where we've never hunted. So we basically at ten o'clock, nothing was turning up where we were at. We said, well, we'll head out to. Yeah. And we didn't go very far in there, and yeah. cut a fresh buck in a doe truck. Yeah. Trying to find something fresh, huh? Let me check out a new area. So, so we're on a buck and a doe right now, huh? Yeah. yeah. And then it started pouring. It, yeah. We were, we got wet. And that and took us right down in a swamp. Well, we jumped them up. And that's another thing. Like, there were some spots where if we would have been, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes earlier, would have been an opportunity yeah. to see them. Yeah, we, we jumped them up there one place and right in the open hardwoods there. <clears> they, well, they, they bent, so we jumped them up. And, well, we let, gave, them, gave them some time to chill out. Yeah, 20 minutes or so. And then got back on them. And they ran, 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 and then literally bedded down in their running tracks yep. in the middle of some hardwoods. Yep. You yep. said you've seen that happen before. They, I, th yeah, they. I don't recall ever seeing deer run, yeah. run, 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 and then that just that happened to me. They're just bed right down. Just a couple of years ago, it didn't even go nearly that far. It it only went maybe a couple hundred yards, and then from a run, it bedded down again. And then the second time that I jumped it up, well, yeah, the chase was on. <laughs> yeah. Then they know that... Uh, Something's following them. That they're being pursued, and they they don't like that. <clears throat> and these two deer, they did the same. They went right down to the river and crossed the river. The river yeah. was too high for you and I to go across. Yeah. And well, that was, reminds me of... So, I think when you were younger, we didn't have coyotes. No. When you were... No, when I was younger. young, there were no coyotes. And the deer here. behaved differently. They did. They, yeah... Yeah. You could you could chase them, chase them, chase yeah. them, and they would just, I don't know, kind of jump off their track and watch and see yeah. what was coming. Yeah. And that, I think, I mean, obviously they've adapted to being chased. Yeah. Because the minute you bump them up a few times, it's almost like they... They want to get, yeah. They, 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 they do everything in their power to lose you. But I can remember, you know, stories when you were younger that it just seemed like they just wouldn't go very far. Yeah. And then watch. Yeah, I, I can remember one one guy I was hunting with, and he had a he had a pistol. He was hunting with a revolver, and it was a big buck. It was over two hundred pounds, and they kept seeing it at a close range because he was shooting at it with a revolver. And finally, the guy he was hunting with said, "You know, use my gun," and it was a thirty thirty, and he shot the deer. He ended yeah. up shooting the deer, but it was like, and the deer never left a block of woods. It was in a block of woods. I don't think it ever left this block of woods. And uh, they get they caught up to it a number of times. And like I say, I'm assuming they must have been fairly close because he was hunting with a revolver. You you wouldn't try a very long shot with a revolver. Yeah. So so then that once they crossed the brook, we and it was pouring. Well, they shook us. They did. They, uh, crossed the river. They gave us uh, the water treatment again, Paul. They did the classic thing, Paul. You jump them the first time, they go away and stop and wait for you to see what you are. You jump them the second time, well, yeah, they, the chase is on. It's coming down pretty good. Yeah, it is. Hold on. Can you think of anything more fun you could be doing? <laughs> Here we call yeah. it a, yeah. which is interesting, no rain gear, just wool. I, I didn't get wet. Not bad, right? No, just around my neck. From yeah, water running down my my jacket was soaked and heavy, but it yeah. never it never leaked through. No, nope, my it's shoulders and stuff. You're right, Paul. My shoulders were uh, dry. Were dry. Yeah. My the front of my legs were a little wet down down on the top of my boots and stuff. Just my collar. But my shoulders was, were dry, yeah. even as hard and as long as we were out in it, and as hard as it rained. We stayed, uh, but it, but the clothes. You would never, you would never think. No, the clothes got heavy though. Yeah. <laughs> then we had a bear of a time getting out. Yeah, we you know, were right, right in a terrible swamp. No, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the. Uh, oh, the, the drive. The drive. Oh my goodness. The yeah. Roads were all ice, and it gets that water. Yeah. And we had a long hill to. Yeah, we had a pretty good hill there, there to climb, and we crawled up it. But uh, in one uh, tire, looking tires back. In the, in the cross. I didn't think we were going to make it. I was very surprised that uh, the, the truck come up over that hill. Yeah. I was very surprised at that. Because you go back down it just as fast as it yeah. was going. Yeah. Up it. 
Your ride? I was gonna say, don't get out. You may what? end up, uh, the truck may end up at the bottom of the hill. How was that? That was one, that was probably the wettest I've ever been deer hunting. My torso's dry and stuff. But my jacket, amazing stuff, isn't it? It is. Yeah. My jacket weighs about 40 pounds. Yeah. I'm sure the roads are treacherous. Yeah. yeah. Coming out of here. Yeah. Call it a wrap. Call it a season. Yeah. Tail between her legs. Roads are pretty slick, huh? They are. Just like a bottle, Paul. I don't, do not want to get my tires over there on that ice, because we are going to go down faster than we're going up. Yeah, the road's getting a mess. downhill from here isn't it yeah I think we got it from here Paul but it was a nail biter yeah so that was I don't know it was a fun season so I guess yeah they're all good they go by they go by fast and uh, and it's a long time it's a long until, 11 months until yeah it's next a long season. long stretch between the next uh, season so and you always look back and I do it and you reflect you know what would you do different you know is there anything that I would do? And, you know, there was days that I didn't go. I'm being retired. I, I can go any, go every day. I can go every day I, I want. And I look back and say, well, you know, there was a few days here and there that I didn't go, that I took off. and Because <clears throat> you, you weren't going to go the last day of muzzleloader. No. And I'm like, no. I mean, I, I don't want to say I don't care if I shoot one or not, but I definitely like to deer hunt. Yeah. And even if maybe I have a little bit of like, I don't feel like getting up and doing it. There'll be a day come winter time when I'm like, I wish I was out deer hunting. And well, I'm see, like, I could have done it that day, and I decided not. Well, to. that's exactly so, that's exactly what I'm I saying right for, now. I yeah. look back and I'm saying that right now. I mean, we're only a week or two out of deer season, and I'm saying, you know, there was a few days that I could have gone. Now I'd like to. And yeah, I should have. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I put in a lot of time and stuff. I I put in a lot of time, but you you know, now that you're deerless, you're thinking you can get away with skipping a few days and still be successful. And then at the end of the season, when you don't have a deer, you're saying, well, you know, I I may have been able to do do a little better, put in yeah. a little more time, and and maybe I should have hunted those days that I took off, and especially at this stage of the game. I'm yeah. six, I'm 64. There's not a lot of uh, I don't I hate to beat that drum too much, but you you understand there's not a lot of uh, you get more deer seasons behind you. You get more behind you than you do in front of you. Yeah. So you just don't know, you know. So a lot of guys that uh, at my age they've they've given up hunting. A lot of guys my age have given up hunting. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Jeez. Life gets in the way with people yeah, your age, easy. Paul. Yeah. Everyone's, there's a lot vying for people's time. There, yeah, you have uh, three little kids, a wife, and a and a career, and uh, and you're well. Most most people your age do. They yeah. have young children and uh, a demanding job, and you're trying to make a living. And uh, well, and I think the other problem stems from people are less tolerant of discomfort. Yeah. Now than yeah. previous generations. Yeah. And I've tried to express this to people, but I mean, I, I don't want to, I really like being uncomfortable. Maybe not at that, like, especially like if you're out chasing a deer, you can really push yourself hard and, you know, you get all tired out, cold, wet, yeah. sweaty, whatever. But I, when you're, when you get uncomfortable, and you go back to camp and get by the wood stove. Yeah, and there's eat a dinner. You, you're, things yeah, you appreciate. You have a totally different appreciation for it. You right. You appreciate uh, it, the simple things. Maybe like you say, a warm fire and a warm meal. Uh, I where like I remember years ago, I don't eat. I mean, I eat pretty healthy, and I can remember years ago. Well, it was back when we, one of those years we had a bunch of snow. There was like 18 inches of snow in the woods, and then there yeah. was like a crust. Yeah. Remember I tracked a deer, I came out on some road, and I was like, I saw a van go by. <laughs> yeah. And none of the yeah. roads were plowed. It, yeah. Actually, it was like two tracks yeah. to get into these places, because nothing's plowed. And if you met a vehicle or get off, you'd be stuck. Yeah. I mean, it was like two feet of snow. 
So I tracked a deer all day in that. Yeah. It's like up to my knees. And I come to a road, and I happen to look, I see a road, and a van goes by, and I'm like, where the heck am I? Like, there's a van driving? I was a long ways from where I... You were, if you had walked where I was parked, if you would, you would be, uh, it was a long way. So it was a long, long way. I can way. remember, I got radio. I turned on my radio, and I got reception up on a knoll. And I think you just heard just thank, a quick break on where th I was. Thank goodness you did because and you, and I didn't like, know where you were. And it was cold. It was like nine. It was in yeah. single digits, I think, yeah. that night. And I'm walking down the road, and you came up on me. I was covered in snow and stuff. You were. I get back, like, and I had lasagna at camp yeah, that night. You, and I, I ate a lot of lasagna that night. You were. And it, uh, it felt really good. You were a. I can remember it was right at. Right at dusk, right at dark, it was dark, and it, you were covered with snow, and it was snowing hard, and the snow was deep, and you were. It looked like a lonely, cold, long walk. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah, but you're right. People don't. People don't like to. Uh, we're, we're instant gratification people. We don't. Yeah. We don't want to work for anything, and uh, and uh, we, you know, we don't want to work any harder than and we have to. And it feels so much better when you shoot a deer. And you've put in the effort that you that you really worked hard at. Yeah, it's you've got a whole different appreciation for yeah. it. Yeah. And that it's goes like that with anything. Goes with when anything. You work really life. hard. Like when you put a plan together, and yeah. it's kind of your own, your own creation. Right. And it all kind of comes to fruition. Yeah. And you've busted your butt. It feels it feels really good. Yeah, and, and those that, are the those are the people that are successful year after year, and you know they they're the people that work for it. There's people that go out and get lucky and, you know, here and there. But yeah. uh, to do it consistently, you have to work for it, especially up here. You, you're going to have to put your time in and you kinda put have an to, effort You in. have to like the process. Yeah. You have to like to yeah. hunt yeah. as opposed to shooting. Yeah. And I think that, and that's why, you know, there's not a lot of hunters up here that do it consistently. No. And there's certainly not a lot that do it consistently up here on big deer. You yeah. might be able to get a deer consistently, but uh, as far as a 200-pound deer up here, I, I don't know anybody up here that does it consistently. And that's, no, there was, uh, we were talking about that at work, my, in my group of guys, that my friends and friends' friends that hunt seriously, yeah. none of them shot deer this year. No. And, it no. Was, and it's not that, like, I felt we saw more deer than usual. Yeah. I'm but surprised. There's, there's some full. really good hunters. Yeah, there are. That, yeah. That hunt in these groups, and, and those uh, hunters too work look, hard. They work and they're hard. They're tired, a lot of them, and they put a lot of hours every, in, basically every day of the season. And they can't do it consistently. And some of these guys are old enough, like myself. They that, saw the good days. Well, they did do it consistently. Yeah. They might not do it every year, but every other year they might get a, a big deer, you know, yeah. or every three years or whatever. Shot a lot of big deer, but not now. They don't do that. No. I don't know anybody that does it uh, consistently. Yeah. Big deer up here in northern Maine. I And I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are yeah. a few people. I don't know who they are. Just to get a deer up here consistently is is a lot of work. Yep. So. But, yeah, yeah, it was a good season. I guess we'll wait until next year. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hope, uh, hope springs eternal, my dad used to say. So, well, yeah, we'll have next yeah. year. We'll be ready. Yeah. You'll have a new muzzle loader. Yeah, we'll see. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And I will have checked my muzzle loader and see what the D I want to know. I have to know whether that was the gun or myself. I Yeah. You know, we'll find what, out. We'll find out what the uh yeah. what the what the deal is with that. We'll see how that uh, how that works out. All right. So well, yeah. that was our deer season recap. Hope yep. you enjoyed it. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. But don't you say uh Get outside, it's good for the soul. Oh, get outside, good for the soul. There you go.